Welcome to this podcast. In this podcast, I'm going to be talking about the moon in aspect, the planet Saturn. And this is a follow up from all the uh, podcasts I've already done regarding the nature of the moon. And in summary, I describe the moon as a sense of self acceptance. So that self acceptance sits at the end of a very long process, which starts from in the internalization process of stimuli. And then the familiarity that comes as a result of that internalization process, which now eventually leads to the sense of self-acceptance. It's a bit more convoluted than that because that familiarity needs to be implemented as some type of environment because acceptance is difficult when there is nothing to reference. Usually when the moon is involved, acceptance references an external situation that we call mother. Mother is now symbolic of that which must accept. And it is the process by which mother accepts the child that the child learns the nature of self-acceptance. So it's a transactional matrix. It's a transaction. Mother gives the child acceptance. The child returns to mother love. The end result of that transaction process is self-acceptance. And this is necessary because self-acceptance represents the first milestone in the development of proper human psychology, the type that we can describe as functional. Now, when things go wrong at this stage, the result is a dysfunction in the personality. And all human dysfunctions of personality can be traced to this issue of self-acceptance. Okay? That's really what it is. So the process really, you can divide it into stimuli, the internalization of that stimuli, the familiarity that is created as a result of that internalization, and then the self-acceptance that emerges after going through the conduit of the externalization of that accepting environment. Now, the nature of Saturn is such that Saturn is a denier. Okay? Its job is to sit on the possibility of expressions that exist within anything. I mean, you take the name Saturn, you can break it down into the two syllables. Sat on. And in English, to sit on something is to delay something, usually pending the fulfillment of a requirement. So we, we all know of administrative procedures. Usually, administrative procedures exist because we're trying to achieve something. And so we break down the process of that achievement into sequential steps. And then we use those steps to create a process. And that way, we can handle so many things. It's like a manufacturing plant. Okay, that way we can produce many versions of one thing through the same process. Okay, now, but that process really is a Saturnian process because its function is to ensure that things work. And that's what Saturn wants. It wants things to work. So when you come with procedure that does not fulfill the objective of this process chain, the process is blocked and you will experience the same thing if you maybe you're trying to make an application and you're asked to submit a cover letter you're asked to submit your resume okay if you don't submit either of those then the process for recruitment cannot start and so what happens if you don't submit any of that and you are waiting for a response from an organization that you really haven't applied to you're going to be waiting for a very long time they don't even know that you exist they have no way of knowing about your intention regarding your desire to be a member of their firm. And so, in that respect, the Saturnian effect is a process. And it is a process that requires certain inputs. And so, it expects you to provide those inputs. And until those provisions are made, it simply just sits on everything. Okay. Why do we need this Saturnian process? What is the point? Now, I have a few podcasts where I've talked about Saturn. I have my Saturn in the signs or in the houses kind of podcast. And I also have Saturn in Pisces. And in, in both cases, I go into very extensive details regarding the nature of what Saturn is. But as a recap, considering all I have discussed so far, Saturn is the making it real part of human psychology and it only exists because we perceive what we consider to be an external environment a hard physical reality and there is really no need for this perception but we demand it we demand it for our own sakes because if Saturn didn't exist we would not know how to perceive a reality would have no frame of reference would have no self 
and would have nothing that looks like a world that we can actually interact with physically. You know, the physical laws of nature are basically all Saturnian. They are the consistency relationships that we find in consciousness. Now, I have also once explained that the reason for physicality, because if you go into the atomic structure or the molecular structure and the atomic structure and the subatomic structure of material things, there's nothing there. What exists is a field or a space of influence, places where certain forces are felt. And what is a force? You only know that a force exists if a force has something to act on. If a force has nothing to act on, then there's no way that you would know that it's there. So as you go deeper into the subatomic nature of material things, you get these fields, which are spaces within which certain types of forces act. Okay? So why does the world look so physical? Besides, what's a field? A field is a set. It's a mathematical construct. And I've once explained, I've explained in several of my podcasts that the reality that we experience really is a mathematical construct. It's a construct. You see? It's a geometric construct. And what is a geometric construct? It's a relationship between aspects of self. That's really what it is. So when you touch anything that you consider to be physical, you're not touching anything. In fact, touch is simply what the way that you define the interaction between geometric constructs, mathematical constructs. So that the reason why your hand cannot go through a material thing is really down to the arrangement of the negative polarity forces, which we call electrons, the aspect of the field that repels what we call a positive charge. Remember, there's, nature doesn't have positive negative. It just created this dichotomy of forces. Okay? And then there's a neutral. And there's a reason for that. And that reason is explained in my book, The Five Principles of Organized Complexity. Because in that book, I describe the emergence of reality as a mathematical construct. Now, Saturn, right, is the specification of this material construct. You know? It's like you buy a computer. The computer has different specifications. Based on the specification, you know exactly what the computer is capable of doing or not doing. Saturn is the specification of our physical universe. And it is brought into existence because we are trying to resolve a central dilemma with our existence. We need to figure out exactly why and how there is only one reality. Because we do not perceive one reality. We perceive reality as an external reality outside of ourselves. And then an internal reality inside of ourselves. And we perceive the demarcation as the boundary of our skin. Okay, and now this is a central problem for us because that is not the correct perception of reality. There is no internal, there's no external, there's nothing. There's really no boundary. But how do we perceive that? How do we know that? It is this ignorance that leads to the generation of Saturn because it forces us to confront that which we perceive. And its job really is to create as much difficulty in our perception so that we can let go of that aspect of our thinking. So it's like a torturer in some sense, you know, and it is in this sense that it helps us to build because, you know, some people try to figure out, okay, what is the point of everything? That's the whole point. There's no point. It's the uselessness of it all. That is the lesson within it so that you can let it go. And this is not easy at all. And as long as this is the case, we continue to experience Saturn as a type of heaviness and inertia in the movement of things. You know, Newton's laws of motion. That inertia that is being described is a Saturnian effect. Okay? Now, within human psychology and human personality, we experience that inertia as a sense of guilt, as a sense of shame that is implanted deep, very deep within our consciousness because it comes from the inability of us to accept the true nature of reality. And when we focus on boundaries and we focus on the demarcation between things, we reinforce the Saturnian archetype. Okay. In the meantime, it allows us to live the type of life where we can perceive a sense of self, so to speak. And then within the container of the sense of self, we have all these, we have our joys, we have our pleasures, we have our sufferings and our frustrations. And all of these are typically Saturnian. Now, when the moon comes in aspect to Saturn, and there are several types of aspects, obviously, if you've been in astrology, you know that there's a conjunction. Then there is the sextile. Then there is the square. There's the quintile. There's also the quincox. There's the opposition. And I'm not going to be going into the details of what it means, the square and all that. I'm, I, I teach that in my classes on a very high level, very fundamental and a very high level. 
But here, all we're just going to be talking about is the relationship between the moon and Saturn in a natal chart because it always means the same thing. The aspects only connote the degrees of difficulty. Even the trine, which most astrologers consider to be a benign aspect, an aspect that doesn't really discomfort the individual, it's Saturn. And so every aspect is discomforting in some way or another because you're forced to confront the structure of your reality and all the assumptions that are linked to the erection of that structure. Like I said, it's the kind of making it real aspect of our psychology. So we force it into existence at a very deep aspect of ourselves. So when Saturn contacts the moon or the moon contacts Saturn in a natal chart, the first thing it does is to deny the moon. It denies it. You know, remember what the moon is really looking for. It's looking for self-acceptance. And it, I've described to you the journey it goes through in order to secure the sense of self-acceptance. What Saturn does is to block all of this. So that the individual does not find acceptance within themselves. And when you do not find acceptance, what do you find? You find rejection. And the sense of rejection is the beginning of all human foibles. It really is the central part of what we consider to be the dysfunctional nature of humankind. The sense of rejection that makes us flee and hide ourselves. It's the sense of rejection that makes us realize that we are naked. It makes us realize that we are ashamed of ourselves. That we carry a sense of guilt. And it doesn't matter when we try to look for the genesis of this feeling of shame and guilt and rejection. We don't find it. And yet we can't get rid of it. So the moon in contact with Saturn is one of the most difficult aspects in astrology. Because it robs you of something extremely essential to the proper functioning of an adult human being. That's why you have so many dysfunctionalities in human nature. It's because right at the point where the human being needs the proper leverage or the proper fulcrum. Saturn contacting the, the moon cuts you off at the knees, so to speak. And so the individual is literally falling. They're falling. It's like falling through, you know, through empty space. You just have this feeling of falling to, to no end. And so you cannot find the foundation within yourself, within which to organize your reality and what you need to organize. The central function of the moon in astrology is to generate the ego because after the sign of cancer comes the sign of leo and the whole point of self-acceptance is that when self-acceptance is done correctly that's when the transactional form is applied correctly what emerges is a fully functional ego just the way it's supposed to be and the essence of leo is that self-containment within itself it's a joy of some kind think about singing in the shower it's a kind of joy that wants to express its happiness and its ecstasy at being alive. Well, when the moon conjuncts or contacts Saturn in the natal chart, that entire process is just cut off. So that wherever you find the sun in the natal chart, there's nothing that can happen there until the central problem regarding the contact between the moon and Saturn is resolved. And it is very difficult to resolve. Why? Because the moon is not a conscious aspect of ourselves. It is very unconscious. So the tendency is that this rejection, this sense of rejection that this contact with Saturn connotes is internalized and becomes extremely familiar. So that the individual goes about looking for instances that confirm their rejection. I want you to understand how difficult this is. It's like continuously swallowing a dose of poison. But you have become so used to the degenerative effects of that poison that you seek it out. And in that way, you undermine yourself. And then you undermine your own self-confidence. That's the debilitating aspect of Saturn contacting the moon in the natal chart. Okay? It leads to a system of denial that is fed by what? An elaborate system of rejection. And even when the individual is accepted anywhere, all their defenses go up. They suspect something is wrong. What's happening here? Things like this don't happen to me. I never get accepted anywhere. Nobody ever accepts me. So what's going on? There must be something wrong. All the alarm bells, they literally go off simultaneously. Because the person has become used to rejection. It has become their emotional safety net, so to speak. And so they experience a very diff, you know, a very specific type of aloneness. I don't want to say loneliness. It's aloneness because usually, and you know, surprisingly, these people have a lot of connections as friends or something like that, but they're alone. It doesn't matter how many people surround them. It doesn't matter how much family surrounds them. It doesn't matter. 
they are alone. It's all an elaborate scheme. It's not real because within them, they really have no foundation to support the further evolution of their psychology. So they just make it up. And then while they're making it up, they experience this crushing aloneness. I mean, this is so crushing that it is one of the telltale signs that the person is prone to depression because they are in a crowded room and yet they feel absolutely alone. Now, why has this been instituted? Because it looks very painful. It looks for you. Ask yourself, why does a human being need this? It's for a simple reason. You see, that person who has a contact between the moon and Saturn, especially the hard aspects, the conjunction, the square, especially the opposition, you know, I mean, the conjunction is much harder. The opposition is, is next to that, you know, in terms of difficulty. That person is expected to build that acceptance that they're looking for unconsciously they're supposed to build it as an external reality because psychology has one important thing especially and we notice this in astrology a lot when we're looking at natal charts is that whatever is denied within the self is externalized as a reality so that whatever you cannot access you project as an external reality so that when such a conflict exists within the human being it is represented as two aspects of the self and remember what i said the self cannot be a spectral that's why the natal chart is symbolized by a circle. But because there's a conflict between these heavenly bodies, so to speak, there are two aspects of the self that are now in opposition to themselves or they're in conflict with each other. And, you know, you can't have that. So the individual needs to reconcile that conflict. And the only way that they can do this is to externalize it as a reality. So they externalize it as circumstances that are very difficult. The whole idea is that within that external environment, that's where the working out has to be. And once it, the resolution is worked out, usually by going through some crisis or some difficult situation, the lessons that are learned from that are now internalized and they are used to reconcile these two aspects of the self that stand antithetical to each other. And in this case, the lesson always revolves around rejection. So the genesis of rejection is that the individual feels some way about themselves. They do not feel that they're worthy of, of, of being accepted. It is usually deep down within their psychology, the result of something. There's a guilt somewhere. And that guilt translates into shame. And the shame is always related to the sexual organs. All shame emanates from the sexual organs. An unhealthy relationship with those sexual organs. Usually as a result of an early environment conditioning within which one of the parents created an atmosphere where the individual had to take on responsibility for sexuality that they are not ready for and they do not understand because children don't understand those type of things. And then the only way to internalize this is to create the disfigurement within the self that is representative of that disfiguring environment. And the individual grows up with this. Usually very early, they get rejected. It hurts like hell. And they never open themselves up to being vulnerable like that again. So they steal up. So they generate a face that literally is a stone cold face as if they have no emotions. But what that is, is a defense against the humiliating and the crushing blow of being rejected. That's really what it is. And for those who have the moon in aspect to Saturn, I want you to know that you are literally carrying and have carried a heavy burden all your life. I'm sure it is not something that you would have been able to explain to anybody. Because how do you explain that? All right. But what it is, there's a reason why that was done why you have come to this reality carrying that type of aspect it's because your sense of acceptance it needs to come from what you consider to be an external environment so the way to resolve it is through ambition you need to go out into the world and achieve something that you can be accepted for it has to be something that ties into the establishment you know the establishment in whatever field it could be marketing it could be business it could be technology whatever but within all fields that human beings endeavor in, there is a socially accepted establishment or group, the gatekeepers, all right? You need to create something that is acceptable to them. And the acceptance scenario is not emotional. It is conditional. They will have no choice but to accept you because you have satisfied all the requirements for acceptance. And that mirrors the transactional matrix within the sign of cancer itself, within the, the moon, the contact to the moon that was denied the early child. Because what is really playing out is the figurative nature of a parent 
accepting the child. In most cases, that parental influence is mother. The bosom of mother. And because it is denied to the child, it goes looking for it and ultimately needs to find it following the same format with which it was denied. And in the process, by the time they find it, they would have built a complete establishment that is ready to associate or join with the current establishment. And that's how the establishment grows. They establish authority. That's how it grows. So when you have a contact, a significant contact between the moon and Saturn itself, then you are destined for that establishment. That's really what it is. This is why it was done to you. I mean, in con- in concert with all the other placements in your natal chart, which will now determine a lot of things regarding the degree, when, how, but usually it is not possible for this second half to happen without the individual attaining a sense of maturity. Because what does maturity do? Maturity allows you to strip away most of your assumptions that don't fit with the process that you really need to get on with. Because while you're young, you have all these assumptions, you have all these ideas of how things should be. As you get older, you realize what works and what doesn't. And maturity involves retaining what works and then discarding those that don't work. And that is why the moon, in aspect to Saturn, the functional light of Saturn, is really a very important placement within a natal chart. Very important. Once you see it within a natal chart, you realize that there is a painful externalization process that's going to happen here, and it has to happen through the confrontation of what? Rejection. And so there are two stages to this. The first stage is for sure. The rejection will be felt. The individual will internalize it because usually that stage is set without the child's permission. You're born into what you're born into. You have no choice in that matter. But the point is that it's a seed that has been planted. And the essence of that seed is that it's mo- it has to grow into something that can now create a much larger enterprise. Okay? Imagine growing up because you have that sense of rejection deep inside you and you have this need to be accepted and you literally cover it up because you project that you don't need anybody. All right. And the reason is to spare yourself the pain. And then you work so hard because you're so driven because you're nursing this inside you and you create something. You create a framework and you create it in such a way that it displays your competence, your ability And the fact that you have been nursing this desire for a very long time. And conditionally based on that, the established authority is forced to accept and integrate this aspect of reality that you have created into their framework. And guess what? If it's a business, now you accept people. Now you recruit people. Don't you see what's going on there? Remember, there is no external reality. (laughs) There is none. This is all going on inside you, your sphere of consciousness. It is in this way that the universe or nature or God, that's how he controls everything. And all of that is represented within your own natal chart. So that the system of denial, and this is a big problem because the world, the world is under the grip of a global system of denial called white supremacy that has the same characteristics that I've just been describing. Its entire projection is based on a sense of rejection. And until it deals with this sense, you know, it can't resolve its problem. And in order to try to resolve it, it has created what we see today as an external reality. See the entire world that you see, the way that it's structured and all that, that's the way that, you know, the collective consciousness is trying to resolve the sense of rejection that it has always felt. That's really what it is. It's not that difficult to understand. And while it is in that process, it denies everything. It denies that that is what it's actually looking for. So it sets up what you call plausible deniability. And you will find this in the life of those who have the moon in contact with Saturn. They're going to deny everything. You know, there are people who the rejection hurts so much that they're not going to give the opportunity to be rejected anymore. So they're going to set themselves up in such a way as if they need nobody, as if they don't need any, uh, uh, you know, appreciation from anyone or any acceptance from anyone. And they carry on like that. You think they're all about business. You think they're all about, you know. And it's a very difficult placement for a woman, even more especially, because women, traditionally, uh, the conditioning that women have had is the sense of ambition is usually not appreciated in a woman, okay? Uh, I know that a lot of that in society has changed so far. So women now have opportunities to be ambitious. But you have to understand that ambition really is not just about corporate ambition. There are many ways in which people are ambitious. The most important thing is ambition is the need to connect and be accepted by the established authority. It also means 
you know, the having of money. Because money is acceptance. If you have acceptance from people around you, they're going to give you money because you're going to create something and exchange it for money. And the really big money comes from institutional acceptance. So that when companies accept you and when institutions accept you, they give you a lot of money because money really is imaginative acceptance. It just comes when people accept you. That's usually when people who have uh, placements in the 12th house, they have the ability to get acceptance from all of everybody, you know, humanity as a whole. You just need to build a mechanism that can integrate, you know, mass media and all that so that people can send you different tiny little bobs of acceptance, which you call money. Okay, so that's really what it is. The moon in contact with Saturn in a natal chart is very painful. Don't ever forget this. If you know someone who has this, you should have an implicit idea of what they're carrying. It's a very difficult placement to resolve. And the individual cannot bear to face that pain. So they deny it. And then they carry this denial and grow up with it. Usually in the process of this denial, they'll hurt a lot of people with their insensitivity or their inability to really connect with others and show that emotional sensitivity and variability. That's not the intention, but they are in protective mode and it's a hyper-protective mode. And if you can reach them, although this is very difficult because Saturnian defenses, they're like scopionic defenses. They're very, very complex things. Okay. And denial is one of the expressions of rejection, you see. So getting to the root of that matter usually is very difficult because they don't let anybody in. Because remember what the moon symbolizes is that sign of cancer, you know, and that is an internalization process. So it's a cocoon of some kind, an incubator with the door slammed shut. Doesn't matter what you say, you're not getting in. Because the hurt usually happens very early in the life of the individual. And then the door is slammed shut and that's it for everybody. Okay? Now, as they grow older, they learn to relax a bit. They learn to mature a bit. They learn acceptance gradually. And ultimately, they're free of this yoke, usually in the 40th year. Yeah. It takes that long for the person to relax enough to realize that what the hell. Might as well just take the risk and open up. That's really what it is, okay? Someone once asked me when, you know, when I was explaining this, they asked me, but why the sense of denial? Why the need to deny? It's because the moon in aspect to Saturn means that there's this critical aspect of their self-awareness that remains undeveloped. Meaning the child never grows or develops or matures emotionally beyond the point where the initial painful rejection was experienced. So they're frozen in that time. So you're not dealing with someone who's really emotionally mature. And you think that you are because the person puts on a disguise. But they're not. They're really just children. Okay? That's the problem. It is this that they deny. That they're children. They, they don't have the emotional sophistication to handle very complex realities because they're frozen at a very early point in time. And it is this which they deny. This lack of growth in this area. Because you find this person usually in areas where this type of emotional sophistication is required. And they seem to be doing quite well and you wonder what's going on. It's all acting. The person is creating an external reality to make up for the lack that they feel internally. And that is how and why the moon is in contact with Saturn. That's the reason why the creator put it there. So that you can build this external reality because it is needed for something else. You understand? So usually it is as a result of some type of lack. An emotional developmental lack that sits deep within the individual which they now deny because it's too painful to confront but ultimately they will confront it when you know they have done the work and the externalization is complete from that external reality and the acceptance that comes from it it will change who they are it unblocks and unfreezes them and that emotional development that was frozen at an early stage will now begin to rapidly grow and catch up it's an exponential growth so that the person begins to change exponentially day in day out they're maturing they're growing and their eyes are opening to a new type of reality and that's usually why this is created or put within a natal chart it is the imposition of a potential that is not destined for early implementation it's usually a late stage game changer so the way to love this person 
the way to love someone with moon in aspect to Saturn is to understand this conditioning, this early stage development or early stage blockage. When you understand it's there, then you understand that who you're really dealing with is a child. And what that child needs or what they're searching for really is acceptance because they want to accept themselves. They just don't know how. So loving these people requires a deep understanding of what they're going through and creating an accepting environment where they are not judged. This is how you endear them to you. It's an environment like an environment that doesn't criticize them. So if someone has the moon in aspect of Saturn, especially the hard configurations, and you criticize this person, and you create environments wherein which they are criticized and rejected, you play back the trauma of the original process, and they will move away from you very quickly. And once they push you out of that emotional whatever door that they have, that's the end. You're not coming back in. You will never get to meet that child again, because now they consider you dangerous. Now, the fact that they don't connect emotionally like that doesn't mean that they cannot perform everyday reality like, you know, being with someone, having a relationship. They can, but that's the person that you're with is not their real self. They may have locked the, that part of themselves up so far away. They don't even know that that's what they've done. Because remember, the rejection has now been internalized and familiarized. And in its place, they put up an act. And the act might be so good, even the person who's acting has forgotten that it's all an act. They've forgotten the original thing till some transit or some memory, you know, brings it back up. And then they begin to go through the motions all over again. Okay. So they, they can be in relationships, getting along with people and all that. But if you notice, there's always something about them in terms of people can often describe them as being very cold and disconnected. It's almost like this person, where are your feelings? Why don't you feel anything? You see, it's almost like it's all an act. That's the moon in aspect to Saturn.